Uh, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, members of the many historic preservation organizations, members of the Civil War Roundtable, and descendants of the Barber and Wiley families who have traveled so far to attend this gathering today, I welcome you on behalf of the McHenry County Historic Preservation Commission. Honest men of every political creed will unite in saying the institution of slavery and the persistent advocacy of its abolishment by the abolitionists of the North, the triumph of the Republican Party opposed to its extension, and the ambition of the Southern demagogues were the main causes which brought about the rebellion. The South was continually demanding concessions and new guarantees for the spread and protection of the institution of slavery, and our government, backed by a Democratic Congress, has yielded to their demands until yielding ceased to be a virtue. And when they saw the tide setting against them, they with blind and unholy ambition and a fiendish hate attempted to tear down the framework of our government and plant upon its ruins a nation founded upon the principles of slavery. The loyal heart of a nation looked upon it with apathy with the, with the, while the South making its final preparations to secede. Our government has so successfully buffeted the tide of treason in 1832 that the people thought we would safely outride this storm. But no Jackson was at the helm. We could not believe that our Southern brethren were in earnest regarding their threats. It was a vain hope and it was not until our forts had been seized and our flag fired upon that the people were aroused from their stupor. Then as the lightnings flash, the loyal heart of the nation was aroused. The fire of patriotism and fidelity to our country lit up the altar of freedom from the rock-bound coast of Maine to the far-spreading prairies of the West, illuminating every valley, hilltop, and plain. Countless thousands thronged to the altar of our country, eager to wipe out the stain upon our flag and to keep its bright stars from paling before the lurid light of secession. In this countless throng, I took my stand. Duty pointed with unswerving finger toward our insulted banner. To follow its lead, I freely leave the comforts of home, the society of friends, and haste to the rescue of imperiled freedom. On April 27th, 1861, just 10 days from now, 149 years ago, Lucius Barber, along with five men from Marengo, three from Union, two each from Genoa and Harmony, and one from Riley, traveled to Marengo to enlist for the defense of the state of Illinois as the specter of succession descended over the United States of America. Lucius Barber began his diary on that day and kept a faithful account of his activities in the terrible circumstances of that war until July 27th of 1865, the date of his last entry. Exactly four years and three months, hence six years and seven months later, March 12th, 1872, at the age of 32, he died and was laid to rest in this ground. It is for this reason and to honor the memory of all those interred here that we gather today to formally dedicate the Barber Family Cemetery as an historic landmark of McHenry County. Good afternoon. By way of introduction, Palmer Whitney and Judah Barber Whitney, buried here behind me, were my great-great-great-grandparents. Those of us who share ancestral relationships are indebted to the McHenry County Historical Landmark Committee for their decision to make the Barber Cemetery a county historic landmark. Additionally, the family would like to express their sincere thanks for the efforts of those who worked tirelessly to achieve landmark status for the Barber Cemetery. In particular, I'd like to, to thank Peggy Stunts, Maureen McCoska, and Josephine Oakley 
recently de uh, deceased for their many years of cemetery support, including cleanup, resetting of tombstones, labeling of graves, and pursuit of historical landmark status. Peggy and Joe Oakley also authored a play based on Civil War soldier and cemetery inhabitant Lucius W. Barber, which has been performed in local venues. There are others we would like to acknowledge for their selfless support of cemetery restoration activities. These include the Riley Grange and Marengo American Legion, whose members cleared the cemetery of brush and trees in 1961. Lanny Young and her sixth grade class of 1994, who undertook as a class project the cleanup of the cemetery. And Dale Ward, who oversaw a controlled burn of the cemetery area about 1995 to remove non-native vegetation from the area. The Barber Family Reunion Association of Java Village, New York, for funds contributed to cemetery restoration and maintenance. Don Andrew, Bob and Chris Friends, and Jim Stunts, who participated in repairing and resetting tombstones in the cemetery and for placing the sign for the cemetery. Alice Wagner, who has been a continuing source of local newspaper articles on related to cemetery inhabitants. John Whitney, who on behalf of the Barber Family Reunion Association applied for a veteran's brass memorial plaque for the grave of Civil War soldier Lucius W. Barber and the members of the McHenry County Civil War Round Table who participating in the installation ceremony of the brass plaque on Lucius's grave. John Winkleman for mowing services provided for the cemetery and Roger Volkening for providing the large stone on which the landmark plaque 